Okay, so I apologize this did not work earlier today. Um, unfortunately, some of you didn't either, so there, in your face. Haha, -ha, just kidding. Uh, you guys all worked very hard, in case your mom and dad are listening. Um, Alright, what we meant to do here in example two was I just had a, an incorrect graph. So I'm going to show you how to, uh, how to graph a square root function here. So if we, I, I changed the graph. Notice I went from negative 10 to 10, 10 to negative 10. So you may either need to redraw this on another sheet of paper, re just rearrange your graph maybe. Uh, if you take you know, this graph that's underneath here, maybe you just go through the center with a little bit thicker pen. And you say, oh, here's my, here's my y-axis. Yeah, and then maybe through the middle, okay, here's my x-axis, and we could do that, okay. Um, but I'm going to use, actually, you know what, I will use that, because I'd feel bad making you uh, not being able to use something I, I'm using. So I'm going to make mine a little bit prettier, though, because I'm sure you have a ruler. So mine's going to look a little bit nicer here also. I'm going to go through the center, straight line here. Over here, straight line through here. So there are my axes. And so I'm going to mark this out. Mark this out. So this will be my x axis. This will be my y axis. So it looks a little worse, but you get the picture. Okay, so your first step, whenever you're trying to graph these, you state your domain, your range, x intercepts, y intercepts. So you're going to find first, the very first thing you would do is you want to take whatever's underneath your radical. Not the negative 6, not this negative right here, not including the radical. You just take the x plus 5, set it greater than n or equal to 0, because whatever's underneath a radical cannot be 0. So we solve this, subtract 5, subtract 5, and we get this x is greater than or equal to negative 5. And this is nice because this tells us two things. First thing it tells us, this is our domain. This is saying that all of our x values had to be greater than or equal to negative 5. Um, second thing it tells us is our first point in our table, our first x value, actually. Get ready for the bell. First x value in the table. And done. Alright, so this negative 5 is going to go in our table for our x. Now we can find the rest of our x values too by saying, well this is x is greater than or equal to negative 5. So bigger values than negative 5 would be negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. It really, as long as you have 5 points, you're good. But I'm going to put a 0 and a 1 in here just because I'm feeling funky. <clears throat> so that's the first thing you have to do. The second step, second step, find your y values. Okay, we're going to plug all these in. We're going to find our y values. So what we do is we just plug negative 5 into our original function up here. We're going to say y equals negative, and you may want to just make this like a negative 1 out here if you want. That's a negative 1 times. I'm going to put a negative 5 in for x. Actually, let me put a different color here. That way it may help you see the substitution a little better. So this will be negative 5 in for x plus 5. And then we have this minus 6 on the outside. So we simplify this equation. y equals negative 1 times square root of negative 5 plus 5. Well, that is square root of 0. All right, negative 5 plus 5. Carry the 13. That's 0. You get square root of 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Minus 6. So you have negative 1 times 0 is 0. So this totally cancels out. You just get negative 6. So your first point is at negative 5, negative 6. So I'm going to graph this. I'm going to go back to the left 5 from my origin, my new origin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and put it right here. And then what we're going to do is now we're going to have to plug in negative 4. So we plug in negative 4. We get y equals negative 1 square root negative 4. I'm plugging in a purple negative 4 here because that's my x value. Plus 5 minus 6. 
So we simplify this. We get y equals negative 1 times the square root of, well, negative 4 plus 5 is 1. So we have negative 1 times 1 minus 6. That gives us negative 7. This is the most tedious part of our problem here. So I'm going to go back for down 7. Well, of course, I'm going to run out of room again. Back for down 7. Then I'm going to plug in a negative 3. So we're going to say negative 3. Pink here. Y equals negative 1 times square root negative 3 plus 5 minus 6. So here's where you might need a calculator. Y equals negative 1 times the square root of 2 minus 6. Well, the square root of 2 is a 1.4 minus 6. So negative 1 times 1.4 is a negative 1.4. Minus 6 would give us a negative 7.4. So I go back 3, down, 7.4, right around in here probably, that's my guess. And you go through that. Obviously you can see a, you can see a little bit of arc, so maybe let's try one more. You know, this isn't great, and I apologize, kind of. Times the square root of negative 2 plus... 5 minus 6, and that gives us negative 1 times the square root of 3 minus 6. Well, anybody know the square root of 3? Cody? Oh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, that's not right. That's not right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. It's, it's 1.7. That's right. So if you have negative 1 times 1.7 minus 6, that is negative 7.7. .7. So you plug that in, and then you graph that point. So like I said, you really only need five points. In this case, it may help you if you have a little bit more, though, because you are going to need to find your x and y intercept. And so if you plug a 1 in, you're going to get a negative 8. Okay, back 1, down 8. Down 8 be around here. Then you plug in a 0. 0 plus 5 is, let's see, 0 plus 5 is 5. Square root of 5 is a 2.3. Negative 2.3, or negative 2.2 actually. Negative 2.2 minus 6 is a negative 8.2. So you're here at this point. So your graph is going down like this, like so. And it continues going to the right. So there is your function. Now we need to write out our domain. So this is the third thing you need to do. Domain, which we already figured out. We figured that out in step one. Right here's our domain. So you can either say x is greater than or equal to negative 5, or if you want to put in interval notation, there's your domain. Your range, you can actually look in two spots for this. Uh, look at your graph. Well, I don't have any y values that are above here. I have only y values below this point. So that's at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So my range goes from negative 6 to negative infinity. So actually, you have to write the negative infinity first negative 6 or if you want to write it as y is less than or equal to negative 6 you can do that I will accept that your x-intercept well the x-intercept is where you your graph crosses your y-axis that is where your x is equal to 0 sorry that's not it the x-intercept is where it crosses your x-axis there isn't one sorry to be a Debbie Downer but there isn't one and then finally, your y-intercept, your y-intercept is going to be negative 8.2. So there's all the rest of your information to go with what you already have graphed. Um, basically, a lot of work just to plot some points, but hopefully you notice where all these values are coming from. Your first step is the most important step. You make sure you take whatever's underneath your radical and set that greater than or equal to zero. That will help you find your domain and your first value in your table. And then when you find your range, you can also notice, I, sorry, I told you there's two places. You can look at your graph, or hey, can you look at your table? Because if this is your range, don't your values, y values start at negative six and they keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller? So it'd be from negative infinity to negative six? <gasps> I didn't know you could do that. Well, you can. So, I hope you enjoyed this example. Uh, stay tuned for example 2B.